Okay, we should be streaming and recording. So go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Um, good evening and welcome to the Finance Committee meeting on February 9th. Janet, can you please call, do the roll call? Yes, I have Supervisor Syed, Councilwoman McGraw. Here. Controller Alam, Attorney Paul Briggs. Do I have uh, Councilman Delarada yet? I show also in attendance Laura Robertson, Matt Yetto, Michelle Martinelli, Elena Finnan, Mike Stevens, Seth Goldstein. Did I miss anyone? I'm here, Rosemary Jaquith. Yep, I got you. Thank you, Rosemary. Okay. No Councilman Delarada? No. All right, I'll just keep watching. Okay. okay. Thank you, Janet. Uh, may I please have a motion to accept minutes from January 12th meeting? Motion to accept the minutes. We have a second? Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a long agenda for the Finance Committee meeting, and I will be really brief because we have another uh, meeting at 6.30. So with that, our first item for action is a discussion regarding certain budgetary modifications. Janet is going to go over 2020 um, budget modifications, and I will very quickly go over the 2021 budget modifications. So Janet, take it away. Actually, just in the interest of brevity, I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions about the 2020 budget modifications. Janet, I, I have one question on when do you think we're going to be close to the closeout for 2020? See, I'm cutting the department heads off effective the end of business on February 28th. I generally close on March 31st because I um, have to accept receivables up through March 31st, but sometime between the end of March and usually the middle of April. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So on the, on the time frame that we're used to, um, and don't mind, but I'll probably be asking you again. I like to get little updates on, on how things are looking for 2020, even before you close that out. So just to have an idea where we did end up in 2020. And Perhaps ISMED others. already has plans to update us regularly, Bill. So you're in luck. Excellent. <laughs> That's right. And I also have even better news. Councilman Delarada is on the is in the meeting. Oh. Thank you. Okay, great. Hi, John. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, you are um, absolutely right, uh, Councilwoman Denise McGraw. Bill, we are actually, we have a three-year budget, a template all done with the salaries and everything. And I have to give a shout out to Frank, our accountant, and Janet helping him. So it is going to be easy breezy. So we can basically um, run different scenarios and models in that to give you different options. And going forward, you know, if we do this, what will happen? So depending upon the menu of options you took. Okay, going with the 2021 uh, budget transfer, this is just um, a template that we have given you. There'll be more by the time we have the resolution. As you remember that in uh, 2021 budget, we had a 4% challenge. And, the, and I'm really happy to report that the controller's office working very collaboratively with all the departments have, we have almost met this challenge. We have another 122,000 left in there. And we are very hopeful that working with uh, one particular department, we will come to an, an arrangement and we'll be able to share it with you. Now, is, yes, is my, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, so wonderful. Uh, I'm so glad you were able to share that and that uh, all the department heads were able to work to find those savings or, you know, or the revenues. That's, that's wonderful news for our bottom line, uh, especially given the amount of fund balance that, you know, we're projected to have used in the 2020 year, which I know you're still closing out. Um, I did not get uh, the budget modifications or I must have missed them. I know there were a lot of emails about the finance agenda. Were they perhaps if they were sent, can someone resend those to me? Because all I got was the agenda, but not the um, actual proposed budget modifications. They were on the initial agenda that went out. 
Could you just set, resend it to me, Janet, really quickly? Well, uh, uh, if that's yep. if. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue, but thank you. I, and I just want to. I'm so pleased. I learned today or yesterday at some point. I and I'm only saying it because he's recording our meeting. But I know that our um, new IT director, Seth Goldstein, has been doing a complete. Um, analysis or audit of everything that's going on. And he seems to be able to find things virtually every day to be able to save some money. So you're teaching him well, Comptroller hey. alum. You um, control my thunder. <laughs> I just wanted to go over that quickly. Can so. I just interrupt? Um, I just received a text message that we there is no live stream link on the website for the finance committee meeting. Can we get that out there? That yeah. I'll get that going right now thank you thank you very much thank you janet so so talking about that uh, there are besides that four person challenge the comptroller's office is working on short term and long term strategies and i had sent you an email with a template of what are some of the initiatives that we are taking and i really want to so we have accomplished some of them and i'll go over them but i i really want to assure everybody that one step at a time and working together as a team and working smart, we will bring the fiscal stability back to the town. There's no doubt about that. And, and Denise, thank you, but I was going to say, talking about working smart, I really want to give out a shout out to Seth, who in his first week has discovered um, about $4,000 savings annually and more so. so Thank you, Seth. Maybe he should be in the finance department. We will see what happens. <laughs> uh, a quick update on the COVID vaccination. Um, thank you so much, Councilwoman uh, Denise McGraw, to her and the county officials. Almost, except for one employee, all the employees have either received, uh, um, have scheduled an appointment or received their first dose of vaccination. And they all also have scheduled their second dose of vaccination um, with the county. So ouch and good health to everybody. It is painful. <laughs> so, a quick discussion about the grants and a grant writer. Uh, part of our strategy has been to hire a, a grants writer who can um, find opportunities for the town, uh, like for example, for public safety, for bigger grants, are just throwing some name like maybe North Street and River Road um, for the finance department, for the town board. So we have an RFP on our website. Um, that's going to, two people have already applied on it, but if anybody knows of somebody, ask them to, uh, to send us um, a response to that. And it is, I believe the last day is the 12th of February. So at the next meeting, at the, we will have a name and a recommendation uh, by the time we have a resolution. So thank you everybody for your support. Um, okay, so a quick update on the OSC audit. I should not even call it an audit. It should be called a report. So the controller's office, they are new, everybody's new to the pandemic. So they are conducting a new study statewide related to the global response to the pandemic to see how responsive the, all the municipalities have been um, in regard to their 2021 budget. So when I talked to him, I told him that when we were creating the budget, we listened to the guidelines by the controller's office. We looked at the governor's budget. We looked at the beige book for trend analysis. And so he was very pleased to hear that. So we budgeted revenues very conservatively based upon that. But so he's going to send us a report um, to, the, to the town board and the supervisor and myself. And is so, and then I think a few months down the road, the controller's office will issue a global study related to how responsive New York State have been. So stay tuned for that. Great. Seth has raised his hand. <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay, uh, live stream link is on the website. Thank, Thank you. you. He didn't hear good things about him. Too bad. 
<laughs> uh, and, and this meeting will be on YouTube as soon as uh, tomorrow morning. It'll be uploaded. So, okay. Thank you very much. If somebody missed something, they'll be able to get you, catch it tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Seth. Okay. For the news that everybody has been waiting for, um, an update on the health insurance RFP and a resolution appointing a broker of record. So we are recommending after talking to two companies having, um, and the team, I would say the committee, it was the supervisor, myself and Janet. We had long meetings, two, three meetings with each um, uh, consultant. And we are recommending to hire USI insurance services based upon their expertise in cost containment, employee satisfaction and admin ease. Now, they have given us a whole menu of choices and decisions. And based upon that, what the town picks, it could be savings of approximately anywhere between 90,000 to 250,000 annually, not for the half this year. The committee challenged all the respondents with, with two things. So our criteria was first of all, to go for the low hanging fruit. So basically we can make some changes this year without interruption to our services, providing the same level of benefits to all our employees. And we don't have to go for nego union negotiations. So at the next one, I will, they have identified some savings um, that I will send an email and the whole elaboration about it. So it could be anywhere between 35 to 30,000 this year. Uh, so this is our recommendation at this point. They were very prepared. We were very impressed by their presentations and their um, and their preparedness. And, and I have to say, because being a geek and Seth will, will approve that, that one of the benefits is that employees can download their all the information on their smartphone. And at any given time, they can see what the benefits are. They can make changes. You know how the young kids do these days. So. Um, Sorry, <laughs> very excited about that. Isma, uh, is who, the, who is the broker of record that we're with right now? We are with Marshall and Sterling. And did they also uh, submit a proposal on this RFP? Yes, absolutely they did. Absolutely they did. Um, I, I just want to clarify, we're with Marshall and Sterling out of Orange County. We're not with the Marshall and Sterling out of Scotia. Right, I understand that. Okay. I know that. We're, it's a but different for, for, the, for the kids watching at home. Different division, correct? Yeah. Correct. I just wanted to make sure that they also were in on the RFP, which I assumed they would be. Of course, we send it to three different insurance consultants. Uh, one of them um, did not want to do that. They don't didn't think that they were as competitive, and then we have two um, two consultants. Um, Yasmin and Janet, you want to say anything else about it? Because I wasn't the only one. Yeah, thank you, Isma and Janet, for all the time that you dedicated. Um, like you said, it was a lot of meetings. USI was very impressive. Um, they were incredibly prepared, and um, they really have put together uh, a really strong plan, a lot of options for the town of Nis unit to take advantage of. And um, all at the same level of care that our uh, employees are used to seeing currently. Um, so that's something that we felt very um, strongly about. And I'm glad that they'll be able to accomplish that. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Any other questions about that? Okay. Uh, the next one is an, a resolution appointing an IT consultant. Now, I've received a lot of calls about that. It's basically that Bill Lawrence retired as of last Friday, and he has a lot of institution knowledge. Um, all we are asking is that to hire him as a consultant or a resource for Seth. It's not going to more than a few hours uh, in the next two, three months. So it's not, and I talked to both Bill and um, Seth and both separately, and both agree that it, they will not require a lot of help. Seth is not going to require a lot of help because he is very good at what he does. And Bill has trained him very well in the last one week. So thank you, Bill, for recommending that, um, that we should do it concurrently. So um, 
this is what I'm asking for, just not more, not to exceed more than five hours. I know, but just as a resource, if it needs to. Yeah. This is something we've done in the past with other department heads. It's, it's sort of a normal thing for us to do to keep continuity in service. Absolutely. Thank you for your support. And the next one is I'm going to ask Elena to go over a resolution calling for a public hearing regarding the police reform pursuant to the governor's executive order. So this one kind of is in, in junction with subdivision J on this items for action that it looks like Yasmin's going to provide an update for. Um, so I'll let her provide the update on that, but we will have to call for a public hearing on the, um, the entire collaboration report once it's completed. Um, so I believe that they're going to have a draft available for us. We'll have public comment and then they will take the public comments that we receive and fine tune it so that it will be ready for board vote. It is due for submission to the state April 1st. And then following up with that, there was another executive order that was also put forth with um, sub H here. That is the emergency management plan as well. Um, so I have a copy of the emergency management plan that was put together. We have some input from the fire chief who has um, made some suggestions as far as changes to make it more NISC-UNA specific. Um, we have to put that forth to the unions for their comment, but we also have to call for a public hearing on that, fine tune that, and then that is also due to the state on April 1st. So we would be looking to hold those public hearings at the beginning of March in a special meeting and then have resolutions for the end of March on those two items. And the town board will get those documents at some point? Yes. Right now it's my understanding that neither one are in, um, they're just in draft format and we're fine tuning them. And then I, if I have any say, the board would have them prior to the, um, public hearing obviously so that you can review them and be able to engage with the public as far as any public comments that you may receive or questions that you may receive prior to that and then as a result of the public hearing and any comments that we receive we will make final um, changes to that so that it can be ready to go for april 1st but we're working on condensing all of it right now there's been meetings that are going on um, and like i said i believe yasmin's going to speak to that in subdivision j here Any other questions on those two? Okay. Thank you, Elena. No problem. Uh, the next one is a resolution to appoint a clerk to the town justice. One of the um, employees at the justice department is retiring and they want to appoint one of their part-timers as a full-time. Um, we have we have talked about the salaries. Uh, we have talked about how it's going to work out. And even mm -hmm. after doing that, I'm pleased to report that the Justice Department will still meet their 4% challenge. So I'm in support of that. And if you have any questions, Judge will be here later on and you can ask the questions. Um, it's just that I'm hurrying up um, because of our 6.30 deadline. My husband will be very happy with me because I'm ending the meeting very quickly. Uh, the next one is, and I will ask supervisor to give an update on the police reform and collaboration progress. Yes. Thank you, Ismet. Um, so currently, uh, as Elena said, we are compiling the draft plan. Um, we're timing this up uh, pretty perfectly at this point. We've received the racial equity audit from CNA. Uh, so we're looking to incorporate um, as many of their recommendations as possible into our uh, written plan as well. This Thursday, CNA is going to be presenting not only to the collaborative, but to the general public. So that meeting has been posted on our Town of Nisquina website calendar. Uh, we'll be sending out announcements about that um, as well. Um, and then going forward, um, also, as Elena said, the draft is going to be available um, in as many ways as we can post it on the website. We'll be hosting uh, meetings, um, ideally, you know, a meeting a week, um, if we can, to get as much uh, general public input as possible. We're going to be touching um, 
select stakeholder groups too to make sure that we're getting as much minority input as possible as well. And then um, we will have that plan available for a public hearing. Uh, we're gonna have um, hopefully some uh, town board participation as well because the town board does have to review and ultimately approve uh, this plan collectively and then have it submitted to the state so um, all town board members as well, we're gonna be looking for your input um, if you'd like to offer it. Um, and so ultimately we're gonna vote on the resolution to approve the plan at the March 23rd meeting. If we have to make any changes afterwards, hopefully they're just minor edit changes, nothing that's gonna change the plan substantially. And then we uh, hope to submit it a couple days early. Um, Worst case scenario, we're submitting it on March 31st, right under the wire. But uh, it's been a long process. I want to thank the collaborative members, um, all the members of the Nisuna Police Department. I know you've been asked a ton of questions. You've been asked to provide a lot of data. We're grateful for all of the work that you did. We're grateful for all the collaborative members as well. It's, it's been a lot of meetings, a lot of time, and now it's going to be a lot of writing. So. Uh, we look forward to uh, the production release of the plan and I look forward to reviewing it. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Next, I'm going to invite um, Councilwoman McGraw to give an update on the CNA Racial Equity Report audit. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Ismet, and thank you for all your work on this. So CNA, has completed a draft. They circulated it to the police chief and to other members of the team for um, edits, corrections, additions. I know there were a number of them. Um, the town board is going to get a presentation on this. And then as the supervisor has already pointed out at, on Thursday evening, there will be a full presentation to the collaborative, the members of the collaborative on it, and um, the general public. And we will publicize that as soon as possible. And as the supervisor said, information about the meeting is already on the uh, website calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this, the next item is, um, an agenda item referred from the public safety, a resolution to permanently appoint a police officer. Um, Chief Walls is here. Okay. Uh, no, he's mad. It's Mike. Fran's on medical. Um, <clears throat> I believe this is to permanently appoint uh, Mario Culera, who was hired 18 months ago, I believe. Um, for those who aren't aware, the civil service changed the probationary period for police officers from one year to 18 months. So he's hit his 18 months. He's been a great officer thus far. Uh, we're very happy with him. Comes to work every day with a good attitude, wants to go out and help people and, and make a difference. And he does it. So we'd like to keep him permanent. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next one is referred, something referred from Public Works. Uh, Matt, you want to talk about appointing an independent contractor for technical assistance during the transition? Yes, uh, it's just uh, Tim Nagel's retiring, and uh, we want to have uh, some way to keep him um, available to us if we need to contact him for some technical assistance. He's worked for over 30 years at the plant, so he knows it best. Um, I don't expect to use him a lot, but if, in certain cases where we just can't figure out what's going on or um, his, where we could benefit from his knowledge, we would just like the, the ability to call him back. Um, we're doing a major overhaul of the controls and the, and the, the um, operations down there at the, at the plant this year. So he may be called upon with just some questions and how we did things in the past and how we want to best uh, move forward with it. But it's not a long-term thing, and it's also, I don't expect a ton of hours. Thank you, Matt. Um, we don't have anything referred from transportation or the community program or the economic development meetings. Uh, with this, it's 625. May I have a motion to end the finance committee meeting? Motion to adjourn. 
Thank you. Oh. And I will Actually, second the motion. I'm not going to motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, Supervisor, do you want to call an executive session of the finance sure. committee? Yep, I can motion to enter into executive session pursuant to public officer's law, section 105. Um, I'm going to ask Paul Briggs to provide us the appropriate subsection. Um, I believe you're aware of the, the purpose of the executive session, correct? Yes, I believe it's subsection D. Okay, perfect. So pursuant to public officer's law, section 105, subsection D, do I have a second on my motion to enter into Thank executive session? Thank you very much. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're going to enter into executive session. We have a separate meeting link for the uh, individuals that will be attending this executive session. At the conclusion of the executive session, we will adjourn the finance committee meeting. We will take up no further action from the floor for finance committee meeting. Join us again at seven o'clock for our special town board meeting. We'll see you all soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.